Hi, my name is Mandolin Royal, and today I need some chicken for dinner. <laughs> my freezer does not have any birds in it, so I took myself over to the boy pen, and I grabbed the visually largest male in there. He is 14 weeks old. He weighed in at 5 pounds, 10 ounces, and I already knew I would not be requiring his breeding services. A lot of that has to do with the leg color. The wings see how they're kicking out they've not folded in they're not growing in well and that's not something I need to keep around he's got length he's got width he's got fleshing he's got everything we're about to get into as I go through this process and because it's just the one bird I don't have my scald tank set up I'm gonna be plucking by hand and uh, I'll show you what we find underneath these feathers It'll be a good time. Just kidding. I hate this part. This is my least favorite part. But this is also where our chicken comes from. And if I want it for dinner, I gotta buck up and do it. Alright, so from here on out, we're gonna get pretty graphic. <laughs> the deed has already been done. There's my bird. About ready to go. Here's the tool that I used. Because I'm a chicken myself when it comes to using a knife. And this is a neck whacker. So I hold the bird in my left hand. I position the headed in this groove right here. And with your right hand, or whatever your dominant hand is, you bring this sucker down as fast and as hard as you can. And it is over with before you even raise it back up again. It's fast, it's humane, and it's a surefire way to know. And I needed that. I needed that a lot. There's a little bit of blood here. That's all right. Drains out in the cone. Everything pulls down to the head. And now I'm gonna go ahead and change our setup so I can get to plucking. Cause this was fast. It's done. Moving on. I really hope I can get this in one take. Cause I'm not doing it again. But now that I have my bird, I start plucking on the belly. You grab some feathers, pull upward against the grain of growth. I want to go ahead and get down to this keel, see if we've got anything to say about that. Ideally, I think I do want to get down to the whole bird plucked. But as you can see, the feathers come right off. This really isn't going to take too long at all. Some things to note. See these little pin feathers? These are the feathers that are in progress of growing. How detailed you want to be with that, that's up to you. I'm going to cook this bird whole in the crock pot as soon as I'm done here. Because I need this bird this evening. So it's imperative that I do this quickly. If rigor morris sets in, I'm done. I can't use this bird today. If rigor sets in, you gotta wait until that passes. You need to either be cooking before it sets in, or you have to wait until it passes. And you have to wait a minimum of 24 hours. Like bare minimum. Might still be a little chewy if you don't go to 36 hours or 48 hours. I'm letting you know that from personal experience. <laughs> if you want a really chewy experience, man, time it wrong and find out. So instead of worrying about talking, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. But this is what hand plucking looks like. I'm going to make pretty short work of this bird. Once I get the feathers off, we're gonna dive into more details on processing, and I'll show you how I do that part. But keep in mind, as you go through this more and more, and as you get familiar, and as you get experienced, you're gonna come up with some of your own methods that you prefer. You can watch videos all day, but you still need to figure out what your own preferences are. Find the rhythm that you're comfortable with, 
It's a learning adventure. And you're going to figure it out. I promise. All right, so I'm back with the knife. The first thing I'm going to do is travel up the neck. I didn't pluck above where I needed it to be because you don't need to be plucking on where you're not spending any time. Same goes for the wing tips. I opted not to pluck that out further because I can just cut it off. There's no meat there, so I don't need it. I'm reaching under the skin. I'm separating out the tissues. I'm looking for the tube that goes to the crop because this bird had not been taken off of feed and I don't want anything to leak. So when I find it, I separate it out, cut it up towards the top of the neck, pull it down, work on separating. Because I'm going to pull this out of the back side. I'm not pulling it out from the front of the bird. Right there's our windpipe. There's some connective tissue there. Once I have that little tube, I'm going to go ahead and put a knot in it. It's a little bit slippery. That's all right. There. Now it's tied off and it's not going to leak on me. With how young this bird is, there's a pretty good chance I can twist this neck off without having to use my knife. We're going to go ahead and give that a go. Take a firm grip on the neck. Twist the bird around. I feel it giving way. If there's too much resistance, go ahead and use your knife. I felt the neck break so I can just go in here with the knife and cut the t connective tissue. And that'll finish it out for us. One more turn, there's our neck and head removed. I do have a feed bag right next to me. That's where all the feathers ended up. It's where everything else is gonna end up that I don't need to keep. A Couple of feathers left on the very end. I'm gonna find that joint, cut into it, cut the tendons, twist it off. Anything that offers a fight, take the knife to it. Leftover bits go in the feed bag. Coming back over here, same thing. I'm finding the tendons. Giving a little twist. Off it goes. As far as nitpicking these last little feathers, I'm going to do that in the kitchen and the air conditioning. Right now, I'm on a timeline. It's warm outside. There's flies. I don't want to be out here any longer than I need to be. Next, I take the feet. From the underside, I stretch that leg out. You can see right here, there's a little definition of the joint. So you go ahead and you cut right there through that joint. Nice, we're gonna keep the feet. We use those right through the joint. Keep bending backwards. Your knife will just kind of travel through. This knife is a ceramic blade. I don't have to worry about sharpening it. If it ever goes dull, I use another one. I get a replacement. They're really cheap, like $7 each. I didn't pluck the tail because I'm going to take the whole thing off. If you put your knife here at a 45 degree angle ahead of the oil gland, which is up here, this one has been dust bathing and utilizing that oil gland tells me right where it is. So I'm gonna go forward, 45 degree angle, cut down and away from the butt. Takes me right through, easy peasy, not fighting with any vertebrae. Then I turn the bird over, face the backside to me. Right here is the end of the keel bone. I grab it, pinch it, pull it up, stick the knife straight in, not downward, because you might nick something important. I go, down a little, about an inch. Work my finger inside. And then I start traveling down to where I made the other cut from the tail. I don't want my knife going too deeply. 
There may or may not be a poop involved, and that's when you want your hose handy. I do have my hose positioned to the side of me. Then I'll go over to the other side, loosen some of that, get into just the skin, and cut down to either side of the vent opposing where I was just cutting. From there, I start working my hand in and loosening above the poop chute. Let me see if I can get a view of that. This is just some fat right here. Cut that off. There's the chute right there. It is imperative that you don't cut that. You want to keep track of that until you've got that cut out and removed. So I'll kind of go inside there and loosen up the last bit of the back end and cut that out of there. And then I'm going to Give a little tug to remove that away from my workspace just in case we get a leak. I'm going to go back up front and make sure I pre loosen that crop really well because I do want it to come out in one shot. Here's our crop right there. If you remember, I went ahead and tied that off at the beginning, so no matter how I pull, squeeze, and shift it to loosen it, I'm not leaking yet. That feels nice and loosened fully. So next I'm going to take both of the legs and get a firm grip. I'm going to take this hand, we're going to travel inside and start loosening the intestines, the gizzard, the heart. Everything we feel on the inside has to come out. So you just kind of want to scoop your hand around on the inside. Now this is where you start to appreciate really good pelvic spacing. If you've had to get your hand into a bird that was not wide enough on the back side, this can be tricky and challenging. You need to be able to get your hand in there. That way you can start grabbing stuff and pulling it out. You're going to feel a hard little lump. That's probably your gizzard. Your gizzard is attached to the crop. So if I want my crop in one pull, I'm going to get a firm grip on the gizzard. Now see this crop right here? Watch it disappear on the inside when I pull. Just firm tension. I'm not yanking. Just doing a steady pull. I need to get up there by the lungs and loosen some of that. It's giving me a resistance. There's the liver. Steady pull. See that crop disappear? It's because it's going to come out the back right there. That took care of the bulk of it, but there's still more we have to get out. There's a pretty good chunk of liver. There's our heart. Here's the rest of the liver over here. This little gland comes off that liver when we remove it. There's our gizzard right here. Those are edible stuff I'm gonna save for the dogs. But we still have more in here. I'm looking for testicles, but I don't feel much. But with the age of bird, that's not uncommon. They're going to be attached to the spine towards the back. There's one. I'm going to look for one more. There it is. I think I broke it. <laughs> nope, that was kidney. It's in there somewhere, but they're so small it's really not worth worrying about. Like I said, we're on a timeline. Going for the lungs. They're going to be up front, in between the ribs, against the spine, there's a lung. That was the left side. I need to go back and scoop out the right side. But look how easy my hand is in there. That is thanks to that pelvic spacing. There's the lung. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, get this bird cleaned up, get it into the crock pot. We're done. Look at that width. Look at that fleshing. Three fingers wide, a little more on the back. Pelvic spacing, it's a lot easier to show you when they're like this. There's our little pelvic bone. There's our other pelvic bone. In this state, this bird's three fingers wide at 14 weeks old. We didn't have to cut our skin up through here to get our hand in the cavity. Pretty straightforward, dual purpose, purebred. Make it at home. 14 weeks old. All right, off to the kitchen. I'm in a hurry. All right, so from cone to plucked to process, it's been 30 minutes since I was taking a video. I'm still not the fastest at this, but I'm getting much better. Our dress weight after taking off the feet and the wings and the neck and everything inside, we went from five pounds, 10 ounces down to three pounds, seven ounce. Everything is still loosey-goosey. Rigor has not set in yet. I'm going to nitpick a couple more of the pin feathers off of here and throw this bird into the crock pot for this evening's meal. That was pretty easy. Actually, I didn't have to leave to go to the grocery store. <laughs> At some point, I hope to get to where I can take my time and slow down a little bit, but this is very much on a time crunch to make sure I'm cooking before rigor sets in. That is very, 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 very important, and I cannot stress that enough. So I'm going to go ahead and get going on our vegetables and stuff, but first I need to get this bird cooking.